Hello, welcome to Two Hot Brides. I am D. Hello, hello, it's Trixie. Trixie's pouring beers. Uh, you recently took a trip? I did. We were able to go out to South Dakota as a family in our new pop-up camper, which was freaking awesome. Yep, yep, yep. And on the way back home, we stopped into Watertown, South Dakota, which is, you know, small. it's a bigger town, but not very well known throughout the United States. Uh, we've got... Uh, majority of family out there so we had a family reunion on my husband's side and while we were in Watertown I decided on the 4th of July to stop into a liquor store liquor stores there are very different liquor okay. stores cannot be in grocery stores so like the high V's cross the street and on the other side of the street is the high V liquor store it no, has to be a kidding. separate entity freedom I know, right? So they have guns all over the place, but liquor can't be in a grocery store. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, you know, I'm can't not. Can't make a, sense out of crazy, dude. I, I'm going to let it go, but like, <laughs> it just doesn't really add up for me. But what are you going to do? Um, so I walked into the Hy-Vee liquor store and I um, was going through the micro section, which I, I was actually really pleased with the amount of micros in there for such a small town that we were in and a lady stopped me she's like can I help you and I was like yeah it'll make it way easier I was like can you just point me to like the local brewers in South Dakota because why am I going to buy beer in South Dakota unless it's something that I can't get in Wisconsin I can't right. order any beer I want to that distributes so I was like I want something I can't distribute here she was so cute she was like well we've got Surly over here and we've got this and she mentioned all these breweries that I could get in Wisconsin and I was like no 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 I'm so sorry. I own a liquor store in Wisconsin. I need something that's just here. She's like, oh, okay. And it, they had these little, like, talker pieces oh, yeah. on their shirt. And then someone else came over and pointed <laughs> pointed to everything. So I was like, that's awesome. But uh, the Fernston Brewery was the first one I saw, and it looked really good. There's a really good eclectic, um, eclectic uh, kind of beers that they have under there. But I decided, since it was so hot that day, that I would get this, like, Patcher Pale Ale because... It seemed like it was like it said haze for days, and like you know those hazies oh, yeah. are in style right now. So I was like, I totally want to try a hazy from this place. It's only five and a half percent alcohol, um, but they're dry, it's dry hopped with mosaic and citrus. And there's a malt variety in here, like there's oats, which make it hazy, and I like it sure. because you can feel it in the mouthfeel. Oh yeah, but really good beer for the start off of having it from like Watertown, South Dakota. Super yeah. cool. Uh, not overly happy at all. I'm assuming that's because of the dry hop action in there. Totally. Uh, it really rounds out nicely. It's uh, very carbonated. I love that carbonated feel. And it's refreshing in the hot sun. Mm -hmm. And we're even sitting in the hot sun today, too. So, yeah. I mean, I, I, I really like the flavor profile on this. I'm a really big fan of the citra hops. I'm also a fan of the mosaics separately. But when they're together... I think it was a really nice combination Absolutely. With, with everything else in this beer. That I is would, a solid beer. Yeah, I would totally, I mean, I would totally drink this again. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, I mean, they had all sorts of beers. They had like 10 mm. beers from this brewery sitting in there, but there was only so much like room in my cooler to right. bring it all home. And I was like, damn it. It wasn't even really about the money. We need it was a like, bigger cooler. I know, it was like all space. So there's another hazy IPA. There's a raspberry curo. That's a tart ale. That sounded really good, but that one wasn't in a, a can. There's They've got a porter. They've got a lager. They've got farmhouse ales, and those are their core beers. Um, one of their core beers that we're about to pour is their Shy Giant IPA. And that's 7% alcohol. So I love Oof. the name called Shy Giant. Yeah. I, it makes perfect sense when you start, like, getting into the ABV of this beer. Yeah. Sneak up on you. They have a really good website, by the way. It's really easy to, like, maneuver, and they've got some solid information on what nice. they're doing in this facility. It looks like they're able to serve, like, you know, breakfast and... And, and lunch and dinner and all that kind of stuff too, which is really awesome. Again, this is dry hops, but it's got the mosaic and citra, citra with dry hops. But they also have another hop variety in it with Centennial Mosaic and Belma. So like, they've hopped it normally, and then they dry hop it on addition with the mosaic and citra. Oh wow! So, I mean, I think that lends it to the high ABV right there. And yeah, everything. for sure. It's a fantastic. Oh I mean, my! It, and it's. It does have a hoppier Florally. presence to it, especially compared to the pale ale that we had before. But you're right. I mean, there's a huge floral note in this thing. Maybe some caramely stuff at the end, too. Like, Yeah, and then as it lingers a little bit, you get the, the hop finish on there for sure. Mm -hmm. 
but it's not assaulting. Not insulting, assaulting at all. And I could actually drink a few of those, but probably, yeah, get, that is, uh, probably get into trouble later. Yeah, let's do yeah. that. <laughs> well, we usually do. So you're right. Um, <laughs> So, Ferns Inn at Brewing is in Sioux Falls. Yes, it's in Sioux Falls. Um, so, the next one, though, that I decided to get was the Kiro. It's a tart ale. And this has Cascade oh, hops. Yeah, that's what's up. It's a wheat pilsner. Yep. And this one's available year-round. But I, I got to tell you, I Ooh, yeah, that's... I hedged my bets and I got two six-packs on purpose. Because I really wanted to take it. And I wanted to give it to, like, a select few people in Madison yeah. to, like see what they thought about it right not one person hated it yeah this was it's so easy drinking well i might <laughs> i would put it in the sour family but absolutely but it's not offensive at all it's like it's like super chill sour it's a very manageable sour yeah i mean it's got a good it's a, i would give it two puckers it's got Not citrus flavors, lemonade, grapefruit finish. It's got like a spritziness oh, yeah. to it, like a, a like a wine spritzer carbonation happening over here. And um, but only four percent alcohol, so you really could crush a few of these without being in trouble. Which is well, and aren't most amazing. of those beers that are in the under the sour umbrella, aren't they mostly most light of them are. ABV? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right. Most of them are for sure. Um, but I mean, it, you could pour this for me and tell me it was a beer from Oso, and I'd believe you 100%. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's from like a small water town. That's, that's fantastic. I think this might be one of my favorite, a little positive addition to traveling is being able to try different things like that. Oh, heck yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we were down, um, when we were out there, because we were in the same hood you were in, and we went to Mount Rushmore Brewing. And uh, that oh, place was really cool, we didn't man. Get a chance to do it that day. It was really rad, and uh, it was it kind of reminded me of uh, like the Ale Asylum people, how they started at Angelic. Yeah, that was kind of their story. Okay. They had all had a brewery together, and then they sold it off. And then he decided he wanted to still make beer a couple years later. So then they started this Mount Rushmore Brewing, and it was it was rad, man. It was they had uh, some pretty heavy stouts. Some aged porters. It was. They a know good where their variety. passion lies. Yeah, and uh, not. I think they only had two IPAs there, which really? shocked me. Yeah. Wow. But it was. Good. It was good stuff, though. Man. How long have they been around doing that? Um, I think. I think she said two years or so. They started. Okay, so not super long. No, not super. Long. But I highly recommend that brewery for sure. All right, what's next? All right. Well, there was another brewery that I decided to try out, and I'll be honest, like, I was an easy sell for me. It's right out of Watertown, South Dakota. Right. So this, it had a mermaid on it, D. Like... I understand. I was like, and I like alt beers, you know? Like, my German, my German lagers, you know? So I went for it, and I got this outer sea alt beer. That's a great I love the label. It's like old school cartooning with the mermaid and like you can tell like a pirate's around the corner even though the pirate's not actually on there. Um, I am the pirate. I absolutely love this. Um, Apparently, currently in their brewery, this is sold out. I think it's one of their more popular ones from what I gather on their website. I think it's one of their flagship beers. By accident, I picked up one of their flagship beers. (laughs) I love that. Way to put a mermaid on it. Yeah, right? No kidding. But... Total lager esque, total smooth body. Oh, yeah. You can tell it's almost been like steamed and it sits in those like, you know, steel containers for longer. It's just, and it's such a pretty color. The it smell is. of it is malty and caramely. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. Gorgeous lacing on there, too. Mm hmm. I'm not. Yeah, that is really well rounded, dude. It's. I love the maltiness of it. There's some tiny copper tones to it. Oh, yeah. Yep. I forgot. Are copper tones your thing? Uh, I'm getting better with them. Okay, that's fair. Getting better. I, my, my palate has definitely changed, which I think is. What How do you think it's happening. changed? Excuse what me. direction did it go into? Uh, so I used to like when we first started this podcast. IPAs were definitely my jam, and now uh, I, I lean towards a good stout and a porter. Interesting. Yeah. And obviously, sours are 
my ultimate. I don't think favorite. I can get rid of the sour ice. Dude, I love it so much. It's like part of my life now. Part of my life for sure. All right, so I happened to pick one of the IPAs because I was like, well, I eat. It's easy to pick an IPA, and I really like to kind of compare the IPAs at different, oh, yeah. at different places. But this is the Open Door IPA, and by accident, it's another one of their flagship beers. Um, it's very West Coast minded for an IPA, so okay. it's on. The, it should be on the Pioneer, more um, hop, hop forward, hop forward, and Pioneer. Which it oh totally yeah, is. oh yeah, which it totally is. So how fun! I mean, that's a great beer too. Totally, totally, and it. You know, for the, the Pioneer aspect to this, it still does have, like, a smoother body, which is kind of fun when they're able to pull that off. Because a lot of times when it's, like, super happy like that, it almost feels like carbonation goes with it. But yeah. maybe not so much in this one. There's just a smoother smoother feel to it all around. But, anyways, those are the ones that I quickly jammed in were able to shove into my cooler. I don't think all of them fit in my cooler because I was just real desperate to make sure we got a variety. <laughs> right. I but... get you. Well, I appreciate your hard work on that. <laughs> Oh, but it was super fun and like how cool just to go into a different liquor store in a different state and like oh, yeah. and say like, well, what's exclusively here, you know? Right. Well, that's one of my favorite things about traveling. You know, we, we usually try to find a microbrewery to go check out. Sometimes like, like I already have my whole Michigan trip planned. Is it based what? around breweries? Breweries and beaches. <laughs> <laughs> Beer in the sun. <laughs> yep, Absolutely. But that is one of the best parts about uh, loving beer, man. And you end up getting to hear these really cool stories of, you know, like that Mount Rushmore dude. I could listen to him talk all day long. That's so cool. But, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. There's plenty of breweries out there in uh, South Dakota, that's for sure. It, I don't know why that surprised me. I should have been so surprised. Right. But... It was it was it was awesome. Yeah. Right on. Uh, all right. Uh, where can people find Trixie's? Oh, corner of East Wash and Oak Street. Look for that bright orange building towards delicious goodness in Madison, Wisconsin. Growlers to go goes right next door. Awesome. Thank you for listening. Bye. <laughs>